Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to another Fry Q&A. Um, thanks again for sending me a track. Uh, I've got five questions. Five? Yeah, it's five this week. Um, like I said before, this is a concept that I'm going to do every Friday, so you can send in your tracks to me through the Artist Coaching Facebook community. Um, there's a weekly chance to ask me all your questions and I will upload this video and podcast episode, whatever every Friday so you have your uh, answer to the question on Friday so if you have questions just send them in every week through the Artist Coaching Community Facebook group and uh, you'll get your answer right there on Friday let's start off with the first one which is from Mikos Pogo uh, how do you get the right to sell your own music do you need some papers or a company etc well you already have the rights when you created the track yourself the track belongs to you, so you are the rights owner of the track. So that's not something you need. Um, you could need a registered company, it depends. <coughs> because if you get money from the streams and from the sales, you should um, do taxes on that money that you, on that part of the income that you have. So that's probably why you need a company. And it, I think it's arranged differently in every country. I'm not sure how it works in every other country. I do know that in the Netherlands, when you earn above a certain amount of money each year you have to uh, own a business and to pay taxes over that amount everything underneath that amount is okay so you have to look up in your own country how that works and when you need to have a company in most cases you don't really need a company so but you do already have the rights of the track because you uh, created it yourself so don't worry about that you're good to go uh, unless it's a bootleg, by the way, or a remix or whatever, an unofficial one, uh, then it's another story. Renato Raduca is asking, is it still important to post your releases on YouTube or on YouTube or Spotify and other streaming services make it less important? Um, I think he means that if it's still necessary <coughs> to put your music on YouTube because of Spotify and all the other streaming services that make things less important. In my opinion, it really is, because a lot of people forget that YouTube still is the number one streaming platform on the world. Spotify isn't available in every country, and YouTube is, so at least in most of them. Uh, it's bigger than Spotify. <coughs> so if you want to have, to have your music spread all over the world, YouTube is the way to go. And aside from that, I really believe that in the future, YouTube will become one of the biggest players on the streaming side for music. That's because they already launched their own uh, streaming platform for music, so keep an eye on that. So it's a definite yes right there. Make sure your music is on YouTube. Bryn Jones is asking, I see a lot of covers on Spotify. Surely all these, co <coughs> Surely all these cover acts are not contacting labels to release their track on Spotify, and instead the money made from cover streams are going back to the original artist. I think what he means to say is that... Um, let's say someone creates a cover and that the income that comes out of that streams are going back to the original artist i'm not sure how this works officially you need to request um well yeah you have to ask the original artist to do the cover and i actually do think that most of them don't ask it so just they, they just just put it online and from there i'm not sure if you instantly have to pay the income to the original owner until they claim it so i think it's up to the official creator to claim it so and like i said i'm not sure uh, but i do know that it's the money isn't yours actually la labinot ramage uh, if you could be a young unknown producer who is trying to make it in uh, 2018 what would you do now this day in comparison to when you started out that's a really good one. I've been thinking about that a lot, actually. Um, I would definitely say no more because I've always said yes, which led me to a lot of beautiful things, but also which led me into the burnout. So I would definitely say no more to a lot of more things. Uh, but aside from that, um, I would go all in way more because I was way too scared of a few things. Uh, I didn't do a lot of things because I was scared and if I look back at my career I would have done way more things so right now release as much music as possible don't overthink all the stuff you do 
like social media posts or your releases, just go all in, release the tracks, put it out there and see what works and what doesn't. Uh, I've been way too picky <coughs> about my releases, about my social media. I think I've could have, I could have grown harder and more if I went all in on those parts. So that's what I would definitely do right now. Uh, Yo Prasun is asking, how does a DJ prepare his unfinished track to test in the club systems? What are the key elements and we should keep in mind plus how to do them in the DAW? Well, I don't think they do a lot. It's just a simple master that they quickly create to test it out there because on most sound sets you don't really hear the big difference between a really good master or a really bad master. Well, really bad master. Of course you hear, but when you already know how to master a track properly, let's say up to 90% and that last 10% is up to the mastering company. Uh, for instance, I always mastered my own tracks until 90% and the last 10% was for the mastering company. So if I just want to test out a track, I mastered it myself, made sure it sounded okay. I tested it and then I sent it over to the master company to make it perfect. So um, how I always did it was just a simple master in my DHW. Uh, the AW created a simple master right there, tested it out and then sent it over to the mastering company when it was finished in my opinion. So guys, thanks again for sending these uh, questions, these questions in this week on uh, the Ars Coaching Community Facebook group. If you want to ask your own questions next week, head over to the Facebook group and ask me those questions right there. I will post a, a, a post every week where you can put in all your questions. Uh, thanks again for following me. Thanks for listening to the podcast. Thanks for watching to those videos and everything you do and engaging with me online it means the world to me. I will see you guys next week. Have a great weekend.